Hello everybody, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. Today I need to clean that bookshelf. <laughs> that one on the back. So I thought that it would be a perfect opportunity to clean the bookshelf and go through all the books and have a look at them and introduce them to you and show them to you. Uh, a lot of them are Russian literature, 19th, 20th centuries. Um, I think quite a bit of it should be translated, so whenever I will be showing you the book I will also be uh, placing like the English cover of it. So hopefully through this video you will discover some new interesting Russian literature if you are interested. So yeah, with no further ado, I hope you enjoyed this video and let's get cracking. So these are the bookshelves that we will be going through today. They are not that many. Just only these shelves. So I think I think we will start from up and then we will go like this. So on this shelf, as you can see, my parents keep some icons as well, not only books. I really do not think that there is any rhyme or reason to organizing these bookshelves, maybe on the color. So we will slowly go through all of these books. Let's move a little bit these icons. And we will go through these books together. So these are all the books we have on our first bookshelf. We will go through them one by one, but I will not be showing you all of them. I will be showing you just, for example, out of these collections, they all look the same. So I will just show you one. So this is Mikhail Fanasievich Bulgakov and collection of his works, but not complete collection. For example, I know for sure that this collection does not have Master and Margarita. And then the next collection we have is Jack London. It looks like that. I haven't read all of this. I've only read one novel on recommendation of my father. The novel was called Moon Valley. If I translate from the Russian title, I'm not sure. I don't know the English title. I really enjoyed that. That one was about a young couple a young woman and a young man and they form they're, they forming a family and yeah i really enjoyed that one and then here we have collection of poems by marina Tsvitaeva. i'm not a big fan of poetry but recently i read some of her poems and i really enjoyed those now this book i will be showing you up close this one though this one i'll show you here because it's just that there is no photos on the inside and it's just a collection of letters by Boris Pasternak to his friends, to his loved ones, to other poets. For example, there are some letters to Marina Tsvetaeva. Uh, yeah, haven't read this one but would love to one day. Next up we have this novel and that's Alexander Solzhenitsyn in the first circle, which I have not read but I would love to. I read the Cancer Word by Solzhenitsyn and really enjoyed that one. And also I read some of his short novellas in school. One Day of Ivan Denisovich, that one, and Matryonin Dvor. Next one I think it's easier if I just get out like that. So this is Boris Pasternak, Dr. Zhivago. Not only Dr. Zhivago, also some of his short prose and also some of his poetry because Dr. Zhivaka isn't actually that big. 
next uh, next books I would like to show you up close so I will take them out and I will show you just on the camera because some of them are really beautiful and some of them have very beautiful end papers and I just want to talk more about them okay everybody so here are some of the books that I wanted to show you closer so first I will just go through them one by one the first this one Goya by Elion Fey Feichtwanger. Feichtwanger. <laughs> it's a historical novel about the Spanish artist Goya and that's pretty much all I know about this book. I tried reading it back in school but I never finished. I think I've... I don't even remember how far I got. Not very far. <laughs> very far but I think it could be interesting I might eventually come to it now next one <laughs> next one I want to show you purely because of its state because honestly it looks like a museum <laughs> museum item because look how old and super super buttered it is Denis Davidov by Zadonsky and I don't know his name, Nikolai, maybe Nikolai Zidons. I will check it later. This is a super, super old book and it's like it's falling apart. I don't think it will ever be read again. I don't even know, like, what do you have to do for your book to look like that? <laughs> oh, I don't know where my father got it from. I don't know, because as, as long as I can remember, we had it. I don't know, maybe he got it from my grandparents' house or so, I don't know. But Zadonsky, he is mostly famous for his historical novels and Denis Davidov is a hero of Na Napoleon War of 1812. And I think Denis Davidov is one of his most favorite and most well-known novels. It should be great, but I will need another copy <laughs> because this is, this is not meant to be read anymore. But purely for its... I like old books because they have a character. Like I feel like this book has its own character. And I love it, even though probably like I will not be reading this copy. Next one is Ovat by Etel Lilian Voyage. I think the English name is Getfly. This book is was very popular and very well known in Soviet Union and in Russia. There is a reason for that, because this book is about revolutionaries. So people trying to organize a revolution, but not in Russia, in Italy. Uh, there is also a love line in this story, but my favorite part, because I read when I was back in school and I remember the ending. I was crying my eyes out. I was crying my eyes out with that ending. It's not even a love story. Like, it's not about the woman and the man. It's about the man with another person. Uh, who also played a really big part in his life, but it's not a love story, and I really liked it. Um, it's a, it was a really clever ending, and I oh I was I was crying. This edition is actually really nice because it has beautiful, absolutely beautiful illustrations. I read it from a different edition, not from this one. So this is a picture of of the couple. So the man was a revolutionary and the woman was also a revolutionary and they were in love. But another important person from uh, from this novel is actually um, a monk who this who our main character has very close relationship with because he grew up with him. This monk was taking care, not monk, a priest, I think he was a priest. He was taking care of him from his childhood. So, so they have very close relationships and <clears throat> The heartbreaking ending was connected to these two people's relationship and I thought it was like really moving <laughs> and I really liked it. I haven't reread this book in a very long time so I don't like I don't I don't feel very comfortable recommending it to you. I need to reread it, but from the time that when I read it it became one of my favorite books of all time. But I yeah, I need to reread it. And then one more book that I want to show you is this one, Anna Akhmatova, and it's a beautiful copy with a lot of her portraits, like the here as well, on the end pages. So Anna Akhmatova, she is our 
for it. And this copy is very interesting because it has Russian poem on the left and English poem on the right. So I will be able to read some of the poetry to you. I will read you two poems that are the most popular. I think, okay, so let's start with uh, Grey-Eyed King, Siraglazi Karol. We studied this poem in school. We had to study it in school and I, I remember that it, that it had really vivid, I don't know, emotion and atmosphere to me. I like this poem because of its atmosphere. It's very short, so I will read it to you. Blessed be the pain with me to abide, the king, my grey-eyed king, has died. The evening was close and the sunset burned red. My husband came home and so calmly he sat. He had been out hunting. His body was found under the ancient old oak on the ground. I pity the queen in her terrible plight, a woman so young she turned grey overnight. He picked up his pipe and his pouch and was gone, on night watches always, and now I'm alone. My daughter I'll go up and waken at once, and in those beloved grey eyes I shall glance. Outside the trees are whispering, never, your king, you'll see, he is gone forever. One more is Zjala Ruki pod Tiomnoi Vualiu. So again, I will read you in English and then I will read you in Russian so you can hear the way it sounds in Russian. So the fir first, English. Behind my shawl, my hands I clutched. Why do you look so pale tonight? Because I made him drink too much of hopeless grief, a bitter wine. Can I forget? He walked out swaying, his mouth a twisted line of pain. I flew downstairs at once insanely, and after him ran down the lane. I shouted. I was joking, truly, don't leave me, or I'll die. He smiled so frighteningly, so coolly, and told me, don't stand in the wind. Okay, so now it's, it sounds better in Russian. Сжала руки под темной вуалью. От чего ты сегодня бледна? От того, что я терпкой печалью напоила его до пьяна. Как забуду. Он вышел, шатаясь, искривился мучитель народ. Я сбежала, перил не касаясь, я бежала за ним до ворот. Задыхаясь, я крикнула, шутка. Все, что было, уйдешь, я умру. Улыбнулся спокойно и жутко. И сказал мне, не стой на ветру. Ah, it's really good. I'm not a big lover of poetry, but... Sometimes when I read some of it, like recently I was reading Tsvitaeva, Marina Tsvitaeva, and I also really enjoyed her poems as well, and Anna Akhmatova is also great. So, Anna Akhmatova. And then one more stack. So, one more stack of books from the first shelf that I wanted to introduce you. First is this one, Erich Maria Remark. Erich Maria Remark is also hugely popular in Russia. I don't know how much he is popular in Germany, in Russia he is really popular. He writes romantic books about, I think it's First World War, and they're beloved in Russia. I read only one of his novels and I remember really enjoying it. Another one is Vasily Shukshin. So we have three books like in, in this series. Uh, this is I Came to Give You Freedom. It's a historical novel about Stepan Razin. Stepan Razin was a head of uprising in like 17th century. So it's a historical novel about, novel about him. But Vasily Shukshin, he was actually kind of a person who was all rounded and he was very talented in different spheres of art. So first of all, he was of course the writer, he wrote short novels and primarily he focused on uh, rural life and life in villages. But later on he went to become um, a screenwriter and then an actor and then the movie director. So he was just like super talented. We have two books by the same author, uh, Ivan Yefremov. So the first book is Taisa Finska, and then the other one is Chasbeka. I'm not sure what it's in English, I will write it down. So first let's start with Taisa Finska. This is a beautiful copy with stunning 
absolutely stunning end papers they are similar and this is a historical novel about Thaisa Finskaya. Thaisa Finskaya is an actual historical figure. Ivan Yefremov, he writes mostly sci-fi, but with philosophical kind of inclinations, I guess. Um, I read only Thaisa Finskaya in school because it was on our have to read list. <laughs> I don't remember much what happened, but I remember that Thaisa Finskaya is an actual historical figure and she participated in um, Alexander Makedon Makedonsky's um, wars and this book also kind of talks about briefly about all the philosophical ideas of the time and how these philosophical ideas formed, formed morals and um, behavior of people of that time so that's the first book the other one Chesbaka. So this one I haven't read but from what I see in the blurb it says that it's a novel about uh, let me read it to you Oh, it has really interesting art here as well. I like these editions. It's about a space expedition of people from Earth who have entered a communist form of society <laughs> and they're traveling to the planet of suffering, which is called Tormans. And creatures on this planet Tormans have created a homeless, quotation marks, homeless civilization, which is based on spiritual and political principles of brutality and violence. And this political system has turned the planet into the land of abandoned and empty souls. The main idea is that any civilization that bases itself on on the principles of principles of brutality and violence uh, is doomed. Ivan Yefremov, he, as far as I know, he's like writer slash philosopher. So you will see a lot of the kind of also philosophical discussions and ideas in his books. And then we have Mikhail Yurevich Lermontov. Uh, it's one of the books. It also has really beautiful end pages. Uh, a lot of Lermontov's works, poems and prose as well are dedicated to Caucasus because he was in the army and as far as I know for some years, for a few years, he was living in Caucasus and so that's why some of his works are dedicated to living there and traditions of that place. For example, if you read A Hero of Our Time, so the first the first kind of novella that is included in that in that bella uh, is about Caucasus, right? And then another also very interesting book which I'm eyeing, <laughs> but yeah, I will not be taking it with me back to Japan, but eventually, hopefully, I will be able to read it. It's Memoirs of Decembrists. Uh, it's a very interesting one because Decembrists are an interesting phenomenon in Russian history. So basically, they are also revolutionaries of the 19th century. So uh, they they organized an uprising that happened in December. That's why they're called Decembrists. So the, uh, the uprising happened in December of 1826, I think, or 1825, 1825. The emperor, the previous emperor, Alexander I, he passed away very unexpectedly. And so there was a short period of like without an emperor. And so they wanted to, to abolish monarchy, to, abol to abolish serf serfdom. I think it's called serfdom in English. Serfdom and yeah, to create a new political system in the country. But unfortunately, the uprising was brutally suppressed. All the people who organized it, who participated in it, and they were about 3,000 of them. So some of them were hanged, some of them were sent to Siberia. And these people, like these, <clears throat> the organizers of this uprising, the Decembrists, all of them, like majority of them, they were from very good families. They were very educated, they were poets, they were from the army. So they they had very quite quite high social status. So that's why this was interesting. They were very educated. A lot of them were poets and writers. 
and their wives as well so then a lot of wives followed their husbands to Siberia and it also was quite a phenomenon and a lot of people from like high society they were impressed by the women's decision because can you imagine they're like you know there are ladies who grew up with a pampered environment who were you know, wearing beautiful dress dresses who were you know didn't know much except for like ballrooms right and comfortable living and then they followed their husbands to Siberia so that kind of caused a lot of respect in society for these ladies and for these women so yeah it's really interesting I would like to get to this book eventually one more you you saw so it's like a whole series of this writer Arthur Haley who is hugely popular on Russian booktube I noticed that Russian booktubers read like his novel airport number one <laughs> on its popularity like among his novels and then hotel as well so hotel and airport are the most popular I think on Russian booktube and surprisingly enough I haven't heard like English speaking booktube talking about his novels so I was just interested that I found him on Russian booktube <laughs> so the first shelf is done and now we are going off to that one to the top one this shelf you will see some more icons and beautiful additions which I want to show you so on the second bookshelf are some of my favorite editions but first I will show you three of these beautiful editions this is a collection of novels by Francis Scott Fitzgerald and I think these editions are just really beautiful <laughs> I personally not really interested in Francis Francis Scott Fitzgerald not yet maybe eventually maybe one day I will be but currently they I don't know he just like his works they just don't really strike my fancy but these editions are <sighs> stunning and now <clears throat> off to I think my favorite editions in my in my parents collection this ones they are all designed like in a similar manner they all look kind of like that only with different colors on this on their spines and they mostly or at least the books that my father has they are mostly of russian classics so first that this is as you can guess <laughs> anton pavlovich chekhov and in both of these books we have his short stories we also have his plays so they are stunning and then we have two books <laughs> war and peace and look what i have <laughs> because i was reading it in school and my teacher she always gave us this kind of task so while you read the novel you have to mark all the portraits of all characters <laughs> and also I mean like main characters and how they change throughout the novel I don't know maybe it was her way of kind of you know making us to pay attention <laughs> to what we are reading and I knew that you know she always does it so I kind of marked all the portraits I could find <laughs> so yeah 
but these covers are I really like them I think they are beautiful so War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy and then these two books actually in my father's library were a revelation to me I was so surprised to find them in here because my father he hates philosophy he does not like discussing like any questions that are like philosophical that are not really like connected very closely to reality or like you know you know that he just doesn't discuss like this high matter kind of questions he doesn't like them he doesn't acknowledge them he is just like nope that's a waste of time not talking about it and so i was surprised to find uh michelle montaigne essays on he in his library like i didn't know that he had this book i was eyeing it myself and then when i saw it in his library i was like how oh, come <laughs> so yeah but the books are beautiful and then some more <laughs> There is also a book by Emil Zalam, and it has two novels, um, The Fortunes of Rugons and The Art. I'm not sure the, about the English name, so Emil Zalam. And then a beautiful set, a beautiful, just, I really like this, like, really vivid pink and all the vivid colors, and as you can guess, by the portrait, by the beautiful portrait. It's a collection of works of Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol. And I really like these books. I read them for school because we, of course, we read these books for school. And I think it has like majority of his works. So it has his novellas, it has um, the Dead Souls, it has um, his plays, yeah and evenings in the village of Dikanka, so it has like all pretty much all of his works so i really like this set and then we have one book because the other one i am reading currently it's um Saltykov Shedin. this book has his fairy tales his tales kind of sarcastic tales he was very famous for his like sarcasm irony in his novels like yeah he is primarily famous for that. Like now I'm reading uh, the history of a town and it's just a very, very mean, <laughs> very mean parody on Russian history. Just very mean. It's sometimes painful to read, <laughs> but also at some points it is funny. So yeah, so the coffee dream. And then we have Ivan Turgenev also his portrait right here and also these books they have his um the gentry nest fathers and sons his novellas like mumu and asia and also short stories from the cycle of uh, the hunter i think it's called the hunter hunter stories or something like that so yeah and then last but not least <laughs> is of course Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin because Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin is Russia's everything <laughs> the way we call him so and we, uh, we also have like two we also have two tomes of his works if, which have his Eugene Onegin of course a lot of his poems and also Dubrovsky, I think it should have Dubrovsky. Dub yeah, it have it has the novellas of Ivan Petrovich Belkin, Dubrovsky, Egypt's Nights, The Captain's Daughter, his fairy tales, and also his dramas. So, yeah, it has a lot of his work, which I'm also very pleased that my father has. And I use it. it, it's kind of, it's a little bit buttered, like maybe you cannot see it on camera, but it's a little bit buttered. And here you can also see it. And the last book, which I have not read, but I feel like it's going to be an undertaking. This book will be an 
undertaking and it needs a lot of preparation. I bought it on the recommendation of my philosophy professor. This was my like my philosophy professor's favorite book of all times and he was like this is a wonderful book everybody should read it it's great and I was like okay if he says that it's great okay I'm gonna buy it I'm gonna read it so I bought it <laughs> tried to read it <laughs> and I was like mm, some other time <laughs> because at that time it was just really like, kind of hard for me to read it's men without qualities Man Without Qualities by Robert Musil. You can guess why it's <laughs> philosophy professor's favorite book. <laughs> so, later on, like recently, recently I watched Leaf by Leaf, and he suggested that before reading this book, you need to kind of read a little bit of English philosophy, and only then read it, because if you don't know the, the, those philosophical concepts, you will miss out on a lot of things from here. So, yeah, this book needs some preparation and it will be an undertaking, but it's beautiful. I really like the cover. I love these editions, but unfortunately they do not publish them anymore. <laughs> but I love them. My parents also in another room, they have um, Life and Fate in the same edition. And it's also beautiful. And yeah, unfortunately they don't publish them anymore. So this was the second shelf. And now off to the third one. So this side here, I will not be showing you in detail because it's mostly poetry and I don't read a lot of poetry. So it's that. I will tell you a story about this icon because I really like it. And I will be showing you this side, this and this, these two stacks, this icon. I really like it a lot and I think we are so lucky to have it. An interesting story about how it got to us. One man in our town, he bought an old house. And in this old house, he found this icon wrapped in an old newspaper. And he went to the antique store and he wanted to sell it to the antique store. And so the guy, the seller in the store, he only took the newspaper. He took the newspaper because apparently it was very old and he ne didn't need the icon. And so that guy who found it, he gave it to his friend. And that friend turned out to be my dad's friend, my dad's colleague. And so when it was my dad's birthday, he gave this old icon to my dad. And I really, really like it. Look, it's so old. It's not in the best condition because you see, you can see some color, like paint in here like I, you know maybe people were painting walls or something and so there is also some damage right here so like we need to uh, like renovate it we need to give it to like an atelier i found on the internet there are people who can renovate it for us i talked i told my parents like you need to give it and they're like well maybe maybe not we will see so eventually i think we will <laughs> i just need to push them a little bit more but i'm just i think it's so beautiful and it's an icon of our local saint like a saint from our region so i think it's even more I know significant <laughs> so I really like this and it's very very old and I'm so I think we're so lucky to have it <laughs> and if you look on the back if you look on the back it's actually painted right on the wood so that's how they I think used to or maybe they're still making icons this way so they paint them on the piece of wood not on paper so it's actually painted on the on a piece of wood and I, I like it so much <laughs> On the third bookshelf, as you saw, we have a lot of paperbacks and some of them are mine. I bought them when I was at university. So, some of them are my parents. So, first, this. This is Dina Rubina. Dina Rubina is a very popular and well-known author in Russia currently. Um, my parents really like her. I haven't read anything by her, but my parents are big fans of both, my dad and my mom. They like, like her writing a lot, so if you can find anything by Dina Rubina in English, 
recommend it. I've only watched a movie based off her book and enjoyed it a lot. We have Waiting for Barbarians. Yeah, Waiting for the Barbarians. I bought this book <laughs> and I didn't read it. I started but never finished. Then we have one more novel by Dina Rubina, На солнечной стороне улицы. And they, then Ray Bradbury, Лекарство от меланхолии. Medicine for Melancholy. Is it a collection of his, short, of his short stories? Yeah, it's a collection of his short stories, which I, I guess I was reading because that's where is my bookmark. <laughs> but I don't remember any of them. I actually really like this. It's actually like a postcard, but I used it for a bookmark and has has really nice back as well. So, Ray Bradbury. One more Ray Bradbury, um, a Dandelion wine, and I remember reading it, I remember loving it, loving it a lot. Yeah, Dandelion wine. Love this book so much. And then this book by Paul Oster. So Paul Oster, Strane Uchadashi Nature, In the Country of Last Things by Paul Oster. This book was recommended to me by my friend. Uh, she is really into like modern uh, novels, contemporary novels, primarily by like Western writers. And so I got this recommendation from her also a long time ago when I was in, we were studying together. I read and I quite enjoyed it. It's depressive. <laughs> it, w it was a little bit depressive, but overall I really liked it. Federico Andahazi. Federico Andahazi. Not sure. El Anatomista. I remember I started reading this book. I bought it, <laughs> but um, it was like <laughs> it was not my cup of tea. A provocation, um, erotica, and a very talented stylization um, under the mid Middle Ages kind of work of research. I guess it could be interesting. I probably should give it another go. I just remember a scene when a young boy was put in a room and he was like really talented in like painting and drawing, but he wasn't given anything to draw with and he drew with his own poo. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I don't want to read it. <laughs> so, but it was a long time ago. Maybe I should give it another go. Jane Austen uh, bought but didn't read it. You see, this book is just completely untouched. That's because I did not read it. John Boyne, a boy in a striped pajamas, right? Yeah, the boy in the striped pajamas. Read this book, really, really loved it, but it was so sad and broke my heart. <laughs> Antoine de Saint Exupéry, uh, a little, little prince, which I read and really, really enjoyed. I think my brother gave me this book as a present for my birthday. And I really, it has all the illustrations, of course, and I really, really loved it. Then we have some more books. Okay, Murakami. We have the Norwegian wood or Norwegian forest. Don't remember the English title. And one more book. So we have two books by Haruki Murakami, which I really like the covers of. And then we have two books by Umberto Eco. So this one is The Name of the Rose. And this one, Foucault's Pendulum. I read um, The Name of the Rose. I remember pushing through, because I again, it was a difficult book for me to read. I remember pushing through quite a bit, but at the same time enjoying. Like the story, the detective story, the detective plot of it, I remember really enjoying and all the like observations on the life in the monastery were also interesting. So, Name of the Rose. And then Foucault Pendulum, I I think I started but never finished. And then we have some more Dina Rubina. So you can tell if my parents really, really like Dina Rubina. So if you find anything of her any of her novels translated into English, please do try, because I think my parents, uh, they really appreciate her works. We have four books by the same author, who is Sergei Davlatov. I am now rereading one of his short collections of his short stories and thoroughly enjoying it. Like, Sergei Davlatov, he is very funny, but 
ironical satirical i love his short stories super easy to read super enjoyable but also there is a lot of irony in them a lot of sarcasm and yeah my father he really likes his works and so this book i gave my dad as a present because i knew that he really enjoyed it i will be reading davlatov i will be taking some of these books with me to japan franz kafka two books by franz kafka america and research of one dog i wonder what what is it in english is complicated for me i think i only read america and i didn't read this one i don't remember enjoying it very much to be honest but yeah and then ivan gancherov obikhnevenna historia a common story so ivan gancherov is mostly famous for oblomov but he has written two more also quite well known novels so a brief and a common story I haven't read a common story i've only read oblomov by gancherov a lot of paulo coelho <laughs> a lot of him because there was a period there was a period when he was super super popular in russia and everybody was reading paulo coelho and so my mom and i we basically bought everything we could find <laughs> by paulo coelho and read it i remember really liking his alchemist yeah this one alchemist and i think 11 minutes as well Devil and Signorita Prim, Veronica decides to die, and the fifth mountain. So, yeah, I haven't read all of them. I think I've only read The Alchemist and maybe 11 minutes, something like that. Don't remember exactly. But yeah, I haven't read all of them. And then we have Camus, Albert Camus, The Fall, which is super short. And so that was the third shelf. I will put all of these books back and then we will continue maybe tomorrow <laughs> maybe tomorrow we will continue with the last two shelves on the bottom shelf is really interesting it has so many different different authors some of them are less known some of them are really well known so let's go through them one by one so let's start on the left corner and here oh maybe it's easier if I remove one one from here then it will be easier to get that one so here we have of course, Fedor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky and his Crime and Punishment. You can tell that I've read it because I read it for school. And let's see. I read it for school and so our teacher, the same as War and Peace, she made us look for the portraits of all the characters and how they changed throughout the novel. So. These are the portraits, so beautiful and papers, by the way. And so, yeah, it just starts straight away with the novel. And also, it's the mon manuscript, the photo of the manuscript. And yeah, so that's one more manuscript, by the way. Oh, can you see? Yeah. I like this book. I really like this book. It's a very good edition then further on we have brothers karamazov also read this book in school um, but i read just for myself and i really really love this does it have his photo no it doesn't have his photo oh and look and it's dedicated to anna grigorievna dostoevskaya so it's dedicated to his wife his second wife he dedicated his best novel to his wife, who was who loved him a lot. She was really in love with, with Fedor Mikhailovich and also with his 
with his literature, with the books that he wrote. She was also just really, really great woman. So I'm glad that he dedicated his best novel to her. Then we have The Idiot by Fedor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky. And I also like this edition, this cover. It looks like that. What do we have on the inside? Oh, it even has some illustrations. So that's some of the illustrations that we have. It's them on the train. And then here we also have an illustration. I love that this book. I didn't know that this book had illustrations. Oh, one more. I oh, one more. Oh, there is a lot of illustrations here. I love it. And I like beautiful. So, yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful copy of The Idiot. Then, then let's go through these books because they might fall <laughs> if I don't remove them from there. So, this is a collection of poetry by Sergei Yesenin. So here we have a book with the poetry of Sergei Yesenin. Sergei Yesenin, I want to show you his portrait. So that's him. He was famous for his good looks. Look at his portrait also. <laughs> so he was famous for his good looks and he was a womanizer. <laughs> he had a lot of women. Yeah. And his poetry. I read some of it. I've also watched a series about him, like a drama series about him, which was really interesting. His poetry a lot is about Russia, about rural Russia, love and women, of course. So, Sergei Yesenin. Then we have a poet whom I quite like who was not quite as good-looking as Sergei Yesenin, but his poetry I personally quite enjoyed, which I did in school, so Alexander Bloch. So this is his... that's his photo, I think. I wonder if, if there is a better one. No, apparently not. Yeah, he was a symbolist. Representative of the symbolism movement in poetry. Oh, there is even some illustration. Which is nice. So yes, Alexander Block. Then we are returning back to Fedor Mikhailovich Dostoevsky, and this is a collection of his short stories. Let's see what we have. There is no photo, but the book itself is actually beautiful. I like the cover cover illustration and the short stories that it has here are <coughs> quite a lot of them. Gospodin Praharchin. The Eternal Husband. I read The Eternal Husband. It was okay. It wasn't my favorite, but it was okay. Son Smishnova Chilovek, a dream of a funny man. I haven't read this one. But yeah, beautiful book. One more Dostoevsky. The White Knights. Let's see if it has illustrations. It has a simple illustration, kind of. No illustrations, apparently. Which is a shame. So, White Knights. And the last Dostoevsky that I have to show you are his notes from a dead house and his short stories again. So, that's what it looks like. Some lesser known, I guess, authors. So, Konstantin Simonov, A Life and The Life and the Dead. A life and dead, something like that. Konstantin Simonov. I haven't read. Oh, that's him. That's his portrait. That's another portrait of him. The Last Summer. Yeah. The 44th year 
44 so I think it's about war to be honest I'm not a big fan of books about war I don't know I don't read too many of them then we have Kuprin Alexander Kuprin St stronger than the death is it a novel oh no it's his novellas and stories about love and that's his portrait I haven't read that much from Kuprin, I've only read the Garnet Bracelet and I also read Asia. Not Asia, Alesia, Alesia. They always use girl names and I mix up. So, Alesia. It was nice. Alesia was about a witch, a young girl witch who lives in the forest with her grandmother and the villagers do not accept them because they are witches. So, there is Alexander Kuprin. Next, this is an interesting book. Сочинение Козьмы Пруткова. So, works of Козьма Прутков. Козьма Прутков is actually a made-up person. It's not a real person. Um, he was made up by a group of friends, which included some poets here they are so brothers Alexei Vladimir and Alexander Mikhailovich Zemchuznikov so these are three brothers and their cousin a poet Alexei Konstantinovich Tolstoy so the four of them all together they made up this writer and they were writing short stories and aphorisms and stuff under his name and actually this person was a mystery for some time so that's interesting then further on we have a few books by Mamin Sibiryak yeah so here we have three books by Dmitry Narkisevich Mamin Sibiryak he has a very interesting patronymic, which is Narkisevich. So apparently his father's name was Narkis, which is, I don't know, is it like a very old name? I don't know, I've never heard <laughs> such a name before. So he has a very interesting patronym, but also another interesting thing about this author is that he is from my region, which I'm so glad about. I actually, as far as I know, he even mentions my town in one of his works, I don't remember which, but yeah. That's also very nice. Actually, in my town, we have a monument dedicated to him because he mentioned our town in his novels. But he wrote novels about this region. So I am living in like the Ural, so the Ural region. This is the place where, where in the 18th century, a lot of industry was placed, like people were looking for gold, for different metals, so this was like this industrial kind of region, and so he wrote about people living here, so he worked, he wrote about workers, he wrote about like owners of these companies that were searching for gold and searching for metals. When he was young, he first published a collection of short stories with a different pen name. His pen name was Sibiryak. Mamin is his actual last name. Uh, Sibiryak was his, his pen name. But at first, when he just started publishing his books, he used uh, the name Tomsky, if I'm not mistaken. His first pen name was Tomsky, but his first collection of short stories was really unsuccessful. And after it received so much criticism, he stopped writing for a while, and he came back with a new pen name because he didn't want to be associated with that unsuccessful first pen name and this is one of his earlier novels and it's also one of his most famous ones uh, the Privalov's fortune I know this translated into English for sure I haven't read it myself but uh, it's very famous especially like in this region in like the Urals and I really need to read it and there's also gold and the mountain nest 
and wild happiness, something like that. So that's Mamin Sibiryak, Dmitry Narkisevich. Then we have Andrei Platonov. Andrei Platonov is also an interesting writer. He has a very specific you know, language, as far as I know. He is often praised for his language. Um, he was the supporter of revolution at the beginning, but then he had like difficult, difficult relationships with uh, the Communist Party. And yeah, so he had quite a difficult life, to my knowledge. And then we have Dmit Vladimir Nabokov. So, Vladimir Nabokov, The Gift, which I know nothing about this book. And then we have Ivan Bunin. Ivan Bunin and some of his poems and some of his short stories. His short stories are very, very romantic. I read it when it's not even so much romantic, more like sensual, very, very sensual. Uh, but yeah. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature, by the way. Here we have a beautiful book, Alexei Tol Tolstoy, Peter the First. So not Lev Tolstoy, Alexei Tolstoy. So that's a different author. I really do not think that they... That's the nose. I really do not think they were related. So Peter the First, a novel about... Is that it have, oh, look, it has even some illustrations. Really nice. Alexei Tolstoy, he wrote some more of like historical novels. He also has a novel about Ivan the Fourth, so Ivan the Terrible. Uh, but this one is about Peter the First. Then we have some short books. So the short books. This is Olga Forge, A Crazy Ship. She was a supporter of revolution over of the revolution, so she wrote like in the beginning of the 20th century, but I didn't read this one. And then we have Vikenti Vikentievich Virisayev. Not imagined short stories about the past. And then Boris Pasternak and some of his novellas, I guess. Yeah, not poetry, novellas. Then we have this one. So this is Mikhail Mikhailovich Prishvin and this is his diaries. Aksakov. Notes of a hunter from the Arimburg Gubernia, like Arimburg region. Oh, look at his animals. Oh, you see, so it's actually notes of a hunter. <laughs> he was apparently hunting ducks <laughs> because there's lots of birds. Oh, see. So, yeah. My mom is, by the way, from Arimburg. So, that's probably my mom's books. My mom's book. And then we have Nikolai Liskov. And his novellas. What novellas do we do? Short stories. This is my, like, these are my father's books. So by Yuri German, Young Russia, kind of. So it's a historical novel. I don't, Peter the First. So I guess it's the historical novel, novel about Peter the First. Not really sure. And then we have a lot, a lot. So all of these books are Valentin Pikul. My dad is a big fan of Valentin Pikul because he really enjoys his historical novels. He mostly wrote historical novels. That's my dad's <laughs> favorite writer. And then here we have some interesting books, which I asked my parents if I can take them with me. And my mom, it's my mom's books. So she said, sure. So here we have like old historical novels written by the writers from the 19th century. Pomilovsky, so this author, whom I have not read, and I kind of discovered him for the first time now when I came home and I just started going through my parents' book collection. Apparently he was a great writer from the 19th century Russia, just overshadowed by, you know, more famous names. But his novella, Ocherki Bursi. The English title, I think, is Seminary Sketches. 
So seminary sketches is said to be one of the best works of li Russian literature of the 19th century. So I'm very curious to read it. I asked my mom if I can take the book with me. My mom said sure. So hopefully I'll get to read it. He also had very difficult relationships with alcohol. He died quite young. I think he died like around 40 years old. Uh, and because of drinking, yeah, he had hard relationships with alcohol. And he actually wrote in one of his uh, diaries or letters to his friend. I don't remember exactly that. I understand that this addiction is kind of killing me. And I understand that it's and kind of an enemy, but I cannot do anything with it. And then collection of Pavel Petrovich Bajov, who was also a local writer from my region. He wrote this kind of fairy tales, fantastical stories about also people working in this region who were looking for gold, looking for precious stones, uh, novels and fantastic novellas about these people. I read it as a child. But it wasn't my favorite, to be honest. And then another interesting author whom I also found in my parents' collection is Vladimir Dayevsky, whom I also... I, I heard this last name, but I didn't really know who he was and what he wrote. But... So I found this very interesting quote when I was looking about... just When I was looking up the information about this author on the internet, I found this very interesting quote by him about libraries, which I really, really liked, so let me read it to you. The quote goes, A library is a wonderful cemetery of human thoughts. One up uh, On one grave, people come into frenzy. From others comes light that is unbearable for the eyes during the day. But there is so many forgotten graves, so many thoughts buried, in oblivion. And Belinsky also told about this writer that this writer hasn't been truly appreciated in our country yet. And actually, uh, like I haven't heard about him like much, I don't know anything about him, but apparently he's very philosophical. He has a lot of thoughts in his novels and his novellas. He hasn't written much, he has, as far as I know, he has one novel and a few novellas. So this collection is, for example, a collection of his novellas. Uh, no novel. There is no novel here, but like, kind of these are pretty much all the novellas that he has written and plus one novel. So, I, I've ordered a collection of his works and I will be taking it with me and I am looking forward to reading it. I checked on the internet. His novel is translated into English, actually. So, that's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to being introduced to Vladimir Adayevsky. I have high hopes. I have high hopes for him. So, this was the fourth bookshelf and now off to the fifth one. Now, let's talk about this bookshelf. And I am sure that majority of the authors here and majority of the books will be familiar to you. Except maybe for a few. 
but majority of them I am sure you will be familiar with. And let's start with this yellow book, this bright yellow book. And it's Branislav Nushic, his satire and humor. This book has his autobiography as well as one of his novels and his short stories. Branislav Nushic, I think he is Yugoslavian, yes, he is a remarkable Yugoslav humorist, satirist, com comedist. <laughs> so, yeah, Branislav Nushic, he was born in 1864 and died in 1938. So, I'll have to check if his books are translated into English, but I think they should be. If it's translated into Russian, probably they're also translated into English. And then we have another satirical novel, actually two of them. So, The Golden Cuff and Twelve Chairs. They are two novels by two authors. So, Ilya Ilf and Eugen Evgeny Petrov. And they bought two of these very famous and very beloved in Russia satirical novels. They, I think they have to do with beginning of the 20th century, right after the revolution. And yeah, they are supposed to be really funny. I there are two movies about based on these two novels, but I haven't watched the movies. They haven't read the books. I don't know. They just don't strike my fancy. But maybe one day I will because my parents, for example, they adore the movies. They absolutely adore the movies. So this is the book, Arkady Averchenko, Krivye Ugly. I will have to check if, it, if this book is translated into English. I haven't read this. But basically it's a collection of his basically short stories about children. Do this line of books and then we will do these books. Okay, so next we have very well known and beloved English classicist who is Walter Scott. Walter Scott and Puritania. I'm, what is, I'm not sure, I don't know what is the English title for this novel. I will have to check <laughs> because I I'm not sure what this what the English title of this novel is. I tried reading it but also never finished. It was too hard for me when I was in school. But I tried. I gave it a try. Arthur Conan Doyle. Can you guess? <laughs> it's the study in Scarlet. This this very nice, simplistic, but nevertheless nice illustration. Znak Chitryok, the sign of four. And then we have Hund of Baskerville, which I also read and also really enjoyed, absolutely loved. And I think that's it. Illustration of Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, which was made up by Arthur Conan Doyle. So there's this really nice book. And then next one is Gerbert Wells illustration. Are there any other illustrations? I don't think so. But yeah, here we have Gerbert Wells. Then we have this nice little book. This nice little book which is Analeta Balzac and his Gopsek. I like this all old editions because they usually always have some kind of introductions. And yeah, just a very short, very quick, I guess, novella or short story. And then we have Irina Adayevtseva, Na Berigach Nivy. And this book was written in immigration, and I think she describes her life in St. Petersburg. In this book, I think she describes St. Petersburg and people who worked in St. Petersburg at that time, uh, like all our poets and writers of that time, but I'm not sure. That's just what I heard about this book. And then, of course, now this book will be familiar to everybody because that's Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I switched on the light. I realized that it was too dark. So next are these two books, which I hope it will focus on them. 
which is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I read this book back in school, absolutely enjoyed it and loved it. Haven't read it in quite a while, but yeah, at that time, really liked it. Then we have two poets. Oh, it's covered in dust. <laughs> covered in dust. We have two books with poetry. So first this one, which is a collection of a few poets. So it has Fyodor Tyutchev, Evgeny Baratinsky, Vladimir Benediktov, Apollon Grigoryev and Afanasy Fet. My favorite one out of all of this, I think, is Fyodor Tyutchev and Afanasy Fet. They both write mostly about nature, like Russian nature, and I really enjoyed their novels. Oh, look at what I found. That's the picture of Vladimir Benediktov. Let's find the picture of Afanasy Fet. I wonder what he looked like. I have, <laughs> I have a bookmark here because we were studying his novels and his poems in school. Oh, that's him. That is Afanasy Fet. That's Afanasy Fet, and let's find Fyodor Tyutchev. And that is Fyodor Tyutchev. Beautiful, beautiful book. And this is just a separate book with the poetry of Evgeny Baratinsky. Oh, that's him. I like this kind of tradition of placing photos of authors on the front page of the book. I think it's really good practice. I hope they would just stick to it and they would always do it. I really like it. You kind of get to know the person who are behind the poetry and novels. So yes. And now off to all of these books, which this, by the way, are all beautiful. Where shall we start? Let's start with these red ones. We will just get them out of the way because I think they will be the least interesting to you because this is a collection of kind of Russian, Russian folklore. So it has just like traditions of Russian people and then it has some songs, Russian songs, Russian riddles. So stuff like that. I, to be honest, I didn't even read it. Now, these two books. I personally really like this series, so that's Alexander Green. Alexander Green is a Russian novelist who wrote fascinating novels. So his most famous one is Scarlet Sails. Scarlet Sails. It's a romantic story. Another one is Running on the Waves, which is also, at some, to some degree, is also a romantic story. And I also read them and enjoyed them. Then, these beautiful books, which I loved. Alexander Beliaev. Alexander Beliaev was writing sci-fi novels. Yeah. I enjoyed his... what I've read from him, I really enjoyed. And then, here, we have a collection of adventurous stories by different authors from around the world. And then in this novel, there is Chevalier, Glenville and Mein Ried. Here, Peristkofer and Frich as well. You see, they have faded. They have faded on the spine. <laughs> they used to be this bright orange, and now they have significantly faded. But that's okay. So that's mine read and collection of his works. Here, Maxim Gorky. Maxim Gorky and his childhood among people, my universities. Oh, it has illustrations, look how nice. And it has really nice, colorful illustrations. And also here, look how beautiful, how great. I love illustrations and books. Here also, an illustration here as well. And here, 
That's a great book, actually. It's a great book. Then, Alexander Kuprin, the garnet bracelet, my favorite. <laughs> Jerome K. Jerome. Three people in a the boat. Then, Anare de Balzac. Bleski Nishita Kurtizanak. I will have to check the English title for this. Damski Roman. <laughs> like a novel for women. Who is the author? Ah, Gustave Flaubert. <laughs> so that's a collection of Gustave Flaubert. It has Madame Bovary. And then Prosper Mary Mare, Carmen. And then Stefan Zweig. Letters from a stranger. And 24 hours from a life of a woman. Stefan Zweig, I read him before and I absolutely loved his novellas. He writes very romantic novellas, but they're also kind of tragic. At least the ones that I read, they were tragic, but I loved his writing. Stefan Zweig, wonderful. Gaspar Bovary, the Madame Bovary is wonderful. Prosper Mary May I haven't read, so I don't know. And we have Emile Zala. Damskaya Shestia has no illustrations on the inside. Does it have a portrait? No, no portrait. One more. One more Emile Zala. And this book has Nana and a dream. A small illustration. Is this one illustration? So okay, apparently there are some illustrations in this book. I think books for adult people should also have illustrations. Like not only children's books are meant to have illustrations. Why not? They add so much to the story. Then also Stendhal, the red and the black also. Beautiful. Then we have a beautiful copy of Jane Eyre, which I read this exact copy. Jane Eyre. Look at these beautiful end pages. Oh, it's interesting. So, dear ladies, <laughs> dear ladies, <laughs> this publisher is starting a new series super series that will that will that will include more than 150 favorite uh, beloved by your hearts novels and so basically the series will include Jane Eyre Angel Angelica by Galon Golan The Thorn Birds and a lot a lot Ah, Agencio, Agencio, Paris Mysteries, or Mysteries of Paris. Queen Margot, Consuela. A lot of French novels. Oh no, actually Jenny Gerhardt, so American novels. Yefremov, Thais Afinskaya. Anareda Balzac, Emile Zala. So, yeah, interesting. And this is Jane Eyre, but fortunately has no illustrations. Georges Sand, Consuelo. Oh, that's her portrait. Georges Sand. This, I, I have to say, this is not the best quality. I don't like this text because it's very thick and, and it's going to be difficult to read. One more. Georges Sand, Grafinia Rudelstadt. And the last two books on this shelf. are these two and they are from the same series and they're beautiful so first of all first of all Jenny Gerhardt by Theodore Dreiser oh it's the series family novels beautiful end pages and on the other side the other side also is beautiful end pages no illustrations unfortunately but actually, oh no, there is a little bit. Short stories. Jenny Gerhardt. Unfortunately, no portrait of the author. 
And the last book on this shelf is The Thornbirds. The Thornbirds by Colin McCullough, which I read and absolutely loved. I heard it long time ago, but I in school when I was in school, and I just absolutely adored this novel. I remember it. <laughs> no end pages, unfortunately. So that's the beginning, the Thornbirds. Beautiful. I like I love this love this book. Love this book. So that was the last shelf. It's a few days later. I forgot to end this bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed my parents' bookshelf tour. Let me know in the comments if you like going through your parents or maybe your friends or, or maybe some other relatives' bookshelves. What interesting books have you found on their bookshelves? And yeah, for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you are having a good day. I hope you are staying safe. And I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you very much for watching.